boys and girls, I have done it. I have done it. I finally found a team game. And not only that, a, a very high level rank team game at it. I think Perez, who's on this side of the map. No, he's on this side of the map playing as the Dutch. This guy is one of the best, if not the best team game players in the game. I played against him 1v1. I played against him in teams. I played with him in teams. And he's undoubtedly, I mean, he's arguably one of the best players in the game because he's like ranked fifth or something in 1v1 as well. But on top of that, he's one of the best team, team players in the game. So I managed to find a team game. I'm sorry it's taken so much. I, I know you guys like asking for them. But where's team games? Where's team games? They're a lot harder to find, but I've done it. I've done it. And they're like gold dust sometimes, but I have managed to find one. So hopefully this one will suffice. We will see if we can put friend or foe colours on, which we can, which I definitely think helps. And we'll try not to switch around too much. Yeah. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the this matchup. We have on the left side, Izad. Everyone knows Izad. Again, one of the best 1v1 players in the game. Also, an exceptionally good team game player. So both this, this team of Perez and Izad in 2v2 is scary. There's, you know, these guys could enter. If you were to have the 2v2 tournament, these guys, and you had all the best players in the game, you know, all the best team players in the game for all the best 2v2s, these guys could definitely win it. They could win that tournament. That's how good they are. And they probably would win it, to be quite honest with you. There are a few other really, really strong team game players out there. Specific team game players. But these two, both really good at 1v1. Both good at 2v2. And we've got Dutch uh, from Perez here. Dutch definitely... If this was a 1v1, you know my feelings on Dutch on, on, on the tier list. Definitely near the bottom. But in team games, it's flipped on its head. And Dutch actually one of the best team game civilizations in the game. They're just kind of allowed to boom harder. You know, they don't have to rely on making more than one unit, which which they kind of struggle with. You know, they get skirmishes in age two, which is really advantageous in team games. You know, they can spam routers really well. It's just that they're just such a really good team game civilization. Let's have a look at EZ down here. We will have a look at some decks as well. Oh, look at that deck. Look at that deck. We're going to have an interesting... T this is going to be a, a C game, I can call it now. After seeing that, look how many cards he's got in age one. <laughs> and of, of all the cards, he still sends Distributivism, which is a very standard age one card. Look, barely any cards in, in Fortress and Industrial and just smashing them in age one instead. Got Fish Market, Schooners, Team Coastal Defences. This is what I like about team games, especially team games on water map. Like, it's such a different game. It's such a different game compared to 1v1. And that's why you get specific players that are re either really good at team or really good at 1v1. Um, you do, obviously, there is a lot of transferable skill, of course. So you do get some players like Izad and Perez that are very good at both. But you do often get players that are particularly good at one and okay at the other. So we're going to see, likely, a lot of water booming here from Izad. So we'll keep a close eye on Izad. Perez... No, more, much more of a standard deck there. No water cards, which is interesting. Which is quite interesting. I'm, I'm actually quite surprised about that. Look at this. Look at this treasure right there. Wow. I love those big fat treasures. It's, they're normally like 300 and something XP or something ridiculous. Or like 300 wood. Okay, we've, we've had a look at a lot of them. So let's have a look at Timogen and Kaleli. Both good players as well. Timogen is, is uh, profound team game player he always seems to be playing team games a pretty good 1v1 player as well these guys more like the 1900 elo so again very good players timogen a very good team game player kaleli also a great all-round player uh and and again japan one of one of the best team game civilizations in the game as well so you know like how dutch and japan are often regarded as quite low on the civ on the 1v1 tier list they're both the complete opposite and right near the top of the team game Civ tier list. So sending the four shrine rickshaw is interesting, but that's going to be the plus 5% as well. So not even sending the, the five shrines. We're sending the one that gives four, but increases them. In. So super greedy. You have a block house in the middle here. Do we see anything else? We see a few water cards, but nothing else too out of the ordinary there. Oh. 
see some early rush here from Russia. Or it could just be a bit of a bluff. Let's have a look at Kaleli as well. Kaleli, wow. So Kaleli, not, again, not a water deck. And this could be really detrimental. If Izad really goes heavy on the water with all those cards he's got, these guys could be in some problems. They could have trouble dealing with the water. So going for some early Hazars. Is he aging up? He's not aging up. But he does have very much a fortress deck. So I don't think he's going to want to stay in age 2 for much longer. He just doesn't have enough cards to stay in age 2. Aging up with the Tory Gates. Japanese Consulate. So going out very aggressive right now. Still traps. Uh, eight Expos coming in. Building Hazards. Doesn't have place of mines yet. Has a lot of wood to play with. I imagine we'll see a couple of houses. Maybe another, maybe another TP as well. The natives on this map are Yoruba. Very good. But I'm not sure how useful it could be. So Strelet's coming out. To my we do see Perez putting a stable down there as well. So it looks like Perez was playing a bit more greedy here. Yeah. Okay, going for four banks. He's only just gone six minutes. So that's, that's a, that, again, really, really nice. He's not getting rushed. This is exactly what Dutch want. They want to be in a position where they're not being rushed. And they can just make whatever units they want and just boom, like, like crazy. It's very difficult to catch up with their boom as well. But both of these guys, both of the teams being quite aggressive here. You know, eight pipemen now coming in as well. Hazar's coming in. But quite late to the party with the Hazar building. Another block house from Izad coming up. Izad is in yellow and Perez is in blue here. Kaleli in red, as is Timogen. And look at these Ashigaru Musketeers coming in. Basically what we've got here is Muskus versus Strelethus. And t in team games, anything can happen, you know. It's just, it's always a mess. It's just, just the clusterfuck of just massing ridiculous amount of units. Five Cossacks coming in. Really nice timing there. Really nice position to bring them out on as well. Because look, they're going to be taking down a couple of Hazards. A couple of uh, crossbow units there as well. And the Musketeers aren't where they want to be. The Musketeers want to be meleeing these guys. And Hazards having to tank everything. A couple of Shinobi coming out now as well. And these are really nice units to try and deal with Shlets. Just to get some damage dealing going on. Don't forget this Blockhouse as well. is doing so much damage the entire time. Like 30 range attack apiece. Pikeman's coming in and that's pretty nice. They'll definitely want to target those Pikeman. Yeah. Oh, putting them in this guard mode, cover mode. And they, they tank 50% range resist in that mode. Yeah, so going to be tanking loads. But he sees more Hazards coming in. So he wants to keep the Pikemen alive. Five more Hazards coming in for Perez. One gets instantly taken down. It's just, just, this is a classic team game. Age two, both players trying to be aggressive. Trying to gain control of the middle map here. Izad's got no time for games on the water. And I like this. The Hazards are keeping everything busy. And he, no, he should have taken down the Blockhouse. I really think he should have sacrificed those Hazards just so he could take down that Blockhouse. There is another one over here, but it's, it's really important to, to take that map control. I love this. A little uh, Yamabushi is con continuing to siege that just so we can't repair it. Looking really good for Team Kaleli and Timogen right now. Pushing all of this stuff back. More Hazards coming out, but there's still plenty of Ashigarus. Now the Daimo coming in as well. Just extra stuff for Japan. And the longer this goes on, the better it is for Japan. Because like I said, you know, Japan, it, they can just keep adding shrines slowly but surely. And if, as long as those shrines aren't being taken down and all of the units are centered in the middle here, you know, distracted with just trying to beat all of this stuff back. Japan are going to boom like crazy. He has sent that card as well. The five shrines, which increases Shrine Gabarate as well. Still traps coming in for Perez. Timogen using those resources. But he doesn't have that many shrines. So really going all out on military mass here. He's got 26 fills as well. So not a big boom from him. Schooner's coming in now. From Izad. Interesting. He doesn't, doesn't look like he has that many options, to be honest. So yeah, I think he wants to keep this in H2. You know, he's got, again, more double blockhouse going down. We've got a pause game. There is four players, so it tends to uh, be more likely that you get those pauses in team games. We'll speed it along. Currently see four banks from Perez. Double TP from Kaledi here. Does he have stagecoach? Doesn't look like he does. But he's on two TCs as well, so he's going to be booming okay. Another follow. 
thank you very much. Not streaming, so if you see this back on YouTube, thank you very much. He's out on 29 bills. Clearly on 31. But it looks like he could be aging soon. So that could be that could be important. That could be really important. He get he managed to get that timing in with the age up. Maybe sell sell some sell, sell some wood here. Just so he's got enough gold because he could once these two villages are built, he'll likely have uh, twelve hundred food. And then if he sells some wood, he'll get that one K gold very quickly. Take a look at the scores. Look at the scores. Neck and neck. Only a hundred in it. This wall going down as well from Kaleli. That does tell me he definitely wants to get into the fortress age here. So he's definitely going to want to just stop any kind of counter pushes that are going in here whilst he's aging up. He does have almost two shipments in queue. So that's really... I, I, I can't see him using one of these. I mean, he, he could use the option of going for like... I don't know. Sustainable agriculture? Not really. I mean... That's for, for, it's only for mills, right? Yeah, so definitely doesn't want to be using any of these cards. He's going to be saving them for age three. But look at this. The game is unpaused again. And bang, they see those walls. And I think that's going to be quite telling what they want to do here. The age up is in. He's aging up with the Exile Prince. Definitely agree with that. But they're not pushing in with a huge mass here. He's adds going to want to boom himself. He does. He starts to add two docks. Schooners is in. And there, look, most of his, all of his settlers on food and wood. And that's going to be for boat production and villager production and strelet production. Yeah, there's rendering plant. So now all the cards that start buffing the water start coming in here. So Izaz played this really well. They identified that they were kind of being a bit aggressive. He puts that blockhouse down. Does some aggression by himself as well. Just gets, just beats back that initial mass. And then behind it, he's going to start booming like crazy. Believe me. And Russia, if there's one sieve that really scale well, it's Russia. So Naginata's coming out now. That's pretty nice. But he's, he's 2v, 2v1 here, the Japan player. Definitely doesn't want to be doesn't want to be in that position. So I imagine Kaleli. What has Kaleli got to save the day? And look at this, look at this score from Dutch. That's exactly why Dutch is so deadly. He's added that last fifth bank down as well. So I imagine we'll see Fortress Age coming in from Perez at some point soon as well. He's got a nice mass of hazards. And already look, 10 boats coming in. And that's the power of schooners. So it, it, unlike vanilla back in the day, it, it just made them much cheaper. I think it made them like 40, 40 wood. But that got nerfed a little bit. But as as compensation, it now builds a lot quicker. So the boats build quicker. They're only 20, 20 less wood. But they, they build a lot quicker. So get that mass out. As long as you've got the wood, the mass comes on the boats a lot quicker. So that eco is going to hit a lot faster. There we go. Like I said, Perez has hit the age 3. And I think... Russia are going to be fine to stay in H2. You know, they can get batches of 10 strelets at a time. And I think that's all that he needs to do is just mass those, mass those strelets to form the main chunk of the army. Whilst Perez does, you know, he has ways of dealing with these organ guns. Being super aggressive with these organ guns, there is an artillery. Quite a sticking out like a sore thumb artillery there. And if these guys see that, if Team Timogen see that, they don't, unfortunately... They see that. They do see it now. And that could be really important because they're going to want to absolutely flank the hell out of that artillery foundry. And make sure any cauldrons that come out of it are completely dealt with very, very quickly. Three organs come in. Oh, and they look at that target log. They're going to be coming down. Oh, oh, oh. It's like bowling pins going down one by one. There's a couple of the cauldrons coming out. And it looks like they were just able to sneak away. They're not going to be able to be in a good position there. So he's going to have to rearrange that. Getting caught by the trees as well. I think he sees it and he wants to go in with the Naginatas. These organ guns getting packed up. Coming back straight in. And look at them go. Look at them go. The snare's going to get with the hazards as well. Oh my goodness me, the damage. He's putting them on stagger mode to try and just make it not deal quite as much damage. To mitigate as much of the organ gun pressure as possible. But look at that. Oh! Five of them going down. Insta-kill. Hedge drop, baby. <laughs> Another four insta going down. Organ guns will even do good damage versus rooters. 
And I think they do know that there's some cauldrons around. And yeah, these cauldrons are really pivotal. And he does. He manages to snipe one organ gun. Lelly should definitely back up here. I think he's going to try. Oh, but the Coleman's are going to get within range. Kaleli, you need to... No, back up with you. Oh, a beautiful micro. Understanding that one Coleman will one hit an organ gun there. Gets the double kill. So they did a lot of damage. That was a nice bit of damage by Kaleli. Team Kaleli there, but... I feel like they could have saved those organ guns a bit better. This bow boom is look, now looking crazy. And this is what Russia, this is what Team Perez and Izad need to do. They just need to hold off. You know, just keep adding banks, you know, using cards or using the church card to add to the bank limit. Just keep massing those routers. Maybe trying to do some raiding as well. And just let, just let Izad do his thing on the water. And there's, it's not going to be contested. Maybe we'll see a dot go down now. Oh, but Timogen sending two foons really nice. He's only in age two, so can't send anything too, better, too much better than that. But two foons will be enough to see that Izad is going heavy on the water. And I think once he identifies that, they need to do a response ASAP. Otherwise, Izad will just run away with this game and his boom will be crazy. I mean, he's bottom score now, but give it five minutes and he'll be top score. Mark my words, if nothing's done about the water. A Colvin does get made by Izad, but it's going to be met with these two foons. He does see that, though. So that's... I mean, Timogen should have pushed these two boons the moment he got them. But it looks like he was just not really paying too much attention. And now Kaleli going full Dragoon. Really nice. Taking care of some routers there. As a TC on the top of the map. St only 10 shrines. Or 9 shrines by, by Japan, sorry. Really, his boom's not that great. I mean, it's, it's doing okay, but 37 villagers needs to increase that shrine mass and, and fast. Otherwise, he's going to get left out of this game. He's out on 71. This is exactly what I was talking about. This is the scaling of Russia. He needs to protect this mass, this water mass, though, and I think he is. Yeah, let's start to make some caravels now. Can Ellie push it out? Ashgar is going to be meeting Splash. That's not what Ashgar is want to be doing at all. These Foons. Foons having to run back. And this is the time that you start talking to your teammate. You start typing away. You say, hey, Kaleli, we're going to need to do something about that water, big boy. Because if we don't, Izad's going to run away with this game. That's exactly what I would be telling my teammate right now. Get your ass down here. Build a dock. And start making stuff. Start making ships. Start making warships. Now. Not in five minutes time. Now. Look, he's max pop. He's basically max pop. For anyone who doesn't know, they do get an extra 10 population space. If he gets another house down, he will be 210 pop. There it is. That's a nice little buff that Russia got. Uh, you know, probably that's... Almost like a year ago, probably now. Not quite that long. But... Some raiding going on the back here. And some nagging artists by the Japan. Catching a decent amount of villagers. At least 10 or 11 there. And they probably kill most of them as well. Yeah, they're miles away from home. Could send a boat to go pick them up. But I don't think it's anything nearby. More shrine wagons coming out. Scores now starting to look really good for Team Perez and Izad. Lenny's here with some Dragoons, but going up against Flex is not good enough. And Russia's taking this on 2v1 right now. Trying to make some Yumi to deal with it. Izad on 80 bills. Just keep on going up and up and up. Especially when you've got Render Implant. He doesn't have Fish Market in yet. But he'd probably definitely be worthwhile getting it, considering the amount of boats he's got. And look at the macro. Look at the resources. Look at it. Just, just going to be infinitely sending strelets. <laughs> and this is why Russia is so fun to play. Their scaling is so fun in team games. And if they get to the later stage of the game, just spam strelets. And it's so much fun. Rooch is coming in for the raid now as well. So they have been able to push back this mass. 
Kaleli is top score. If we go have a look at Kaleli. He's on 69 villagers. What do we say to that? Nice. He is on three TCs. Nice goon mass here. He's going to need to add something more than goons. He can't just keep adding goons here, I don't think. He needs to make something else. Sustainable agriculture now coming in. There are still some herds on the map. It looks like he's got plenty of wood. Akan coming in for Timogen. He's making Hazars. Could be a nice, nice Hazar switch here. Does have veterancy in for them as well. The push is coming back in. It's relentless from Team Perez and he's out here. And their score's looking really, really good. But look at Kaleli's score. Look at Kaleli's score. It's popping off. Although Izad, I think, is definitely underscored right now. The Japan player, Timogen. He's had got plenty of team games to him. Look at that. Look at that Hazard switch out of nowhere. Absolutely beautiful. Even the Rooters will have, have a hard time dealing with that mass. Cleaning up the skirmishers. It's just not enough, really, to deal damage to these Rooters. I just think Timogen just doesn't have enough stuff here. He's got some Yumi, but he just didn't boom hard enough. Just wasn't able to get that shrine boom that he wanted. There should be shrines all over the, this side of the map as well. Up here. Down here. Behind his base. Yeah, Strelet's now just going to be running Raya. And it looks like Kaleli's trying to go to the Industrial Age. He has five organ guns instead of two heavy cannons. That's an interesting move. Definitely think two two heavy cannons is better. You can't beat two heavy cannons, you know. You, you just you just can't beat heavy cannons. But his boom is really popping up. He's this gold mine has been really really nice for him. He's got lots of berries up here as well, which is really good for Japan generally. But look at this mass. Look at these strelets. Look at these musketeers now. So many of them. Seventy nine bills for Kaleli. Perez is on thirty six bills. He's been raided quite heavily, I believe. Getting in some more bank cards. So he's got an extra... He can have an extra two banks here. He currently has six. He'll go be going for his seven one very shortly. Rooters and Skirms raiding at the north side of the map now. And I know the colour switching might be uh, a pain and a bit of an eyesore. But I think it's the best we're going to be able to deal with here. Look at this. Look at the map on the water. Just absolutely boats everywhere. Let's take a look at... Izad. 95 villages for Izad. He is going to Industrial Age. But I think Timogen and Kaleli are going to call it there. Just overrun with because stuff. And Kaleli was holding his own. But I think the pressure on Timogen was just too much. And although Japan a very good team game civilization, they went for the rush. They went for the aggression instead of the boom. And it just didn't pay off for them, unfortunately. And because. well played to Team Perez and Izad. Absolutely classic game by them. Dominating their opponents. Look at that. Kaleli keeping up, though. Really nice raid there against Perez. But unfortunately, just wasn't enough. Little too, little too late. And there's Timogen right down at the bottom. Kaleli and Izad near the top. And Perez dominating for the first, you know, sort of half, two-thirds of that map. But then, yeah, getting outscaled by the other opponents. Getting raided as well. And he just couldn't keep up. But yeah, well played to both. Great game. Found a really high level team game. I hope that was good enough. Let me know what you guys think. Do you want me to do more of them? Do you want me to not put friend or foe colors on again? You know, let me know what you guys think. And uh, if you like it and enjoyed it, I will try my hardest to find more team games. Guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.